It's working. Wait, do you want ice? Uh, do you want ice? Just pour it in. We don't have time. Just pour no, that sucker in there real quick. Ice, this all right, put, ice. All right, and then bring it to me. Come yeah, on. There, thanks. All right, thank you. All right, I'm putting now I'm hitting got it, all right? We are live. Okay. We're live. Yay! All right. Yay. Today's April 3rd. 2024. I'm here with Lydia Durham and David. As long as you're sitting there, you may as well sit straight. So, um, and David Adair. I'm trying to get out of the way. <laughs> with that, just sit there. You're the witness. You'll be the okay. witness. Everybody wants to hear what you guys are up to anyway. So it's all good. All right. So uh, we had talked several times about Lydia's like the core story of her life. And we tried to go step by step so people would kind of get the. Um, you know, the basic story down the, you know, so Lydia, I know we had talked last week and you said you, you could tell us some more stories and details. I did get one question multiple times and that's like, they all want to know how MJ ties in. How do you know about MJ? And there were some questions about Whitney as well. So however you want to tell that story is perfect. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, Lord. Well, uh, I would say that's very interesting because, I mean, in a way, I, I didn't know about MJ, but I guess in 2018, he decided he was going to let me know. So as strange as that may sound, we're talking about the master of disguises himself. So... Being that said, if you it, it would go into the fact of having to explain that when you grow up, you know, he had said in, in, in interviews before, and if you look throughout his life and throughout interviews, if you paid attention to him, if you're, you know, a real big fan of his and you've watched a lot of not only his music, but if you really watch a lot of his interviews, if you watch a lot of things he would say and put out there, you know, when he's just speaking out, he goes a lot into, you know, speaking about things about when he was a little boy, his childhood, growing up, what it's like growing up, um, you know, in the limelight, um, how he would have to pretend he's somebody else, how he would have to literally wear disguises, you know, even from when he was young and he was a Jehovah witness and he was a little boy having to knock on people's doors in a disguise so they wouldn't know who he was, even as a little boy, because he was doing music since say five years old and up, you know, even with his brothers and this and that. So therefore he would have to from a very young age, pretend to be someone else, look like someone else, and just always be someone other than who he was. So when you really think about man in the mirror and if make a change, you know, take a look at yourself and make the change, well, you got to think of those words a little differently than maybe the normal person would think of those words and right. literally that being him, maybe he is looking in the mirror, looked at himself and made a physical change as well as other changes as well. So the physical change being that um, when he goes out or when he does something or maybe when he was on stage, he made a physical change or when he was doing interviews, he made a physical change. So this way, when he was going out, and about he could actually just be himself rather than something he wasn't. And he could be amongst regular people, ordinary people, and nobody would know who it is because we all know, but I mean, really think to yourself, if you're just amongst the average everyday person, you act one way. But if you right now met somebody you really wanted to meet all your life, you're going to change up who you are like this. You're going to maybe not do, you know, this. You're going to have your best you on. You know, if you speak a certain way, maybe you're not going to speak that way. You're going to be a little more 
reserved. You're going to be this. You're going to, you know, you get maybe nervous. You get shy. You get this. You get that. You pull back. You know, you're going to watch what you do. You might go to dinner and not eat the greasy this. The, you might have a salad instead of the hamburger. You might. He knows that he's done said that before. So he's not going, he doesn't want to go around people as MJ. He wants to go around people as someone else, a, a regular person, because then he will see who they really are. And then if you have consistency with going around people as a regular person, you consistently see who they really are and people's true colors start coming out. But if you're around them here and there as that person, yeah. then people are going to consistently try to act like, you know, or every time they see you as MJ, they're always going to try to act like, you know, someone else other than that. Mm -hmm. How's he really going to know who they are, you know? So um, that's one thing. And what, so he's a master of disguise and he had to be, since young right so that that's one aspect then you fall into other aspects of you know why he would do these things you know or how you know if you have the resources so money power and you have been around you know people places and things that could give you access and you know teach you how to do these things you know and you have just a world that shown you this and this is what you've been exposed to for years. Well, you definitely know how you know, you have connections, you know, you have all the people, right people, places and things lined up where you can do this and you know that it's done. You know, what's out there, you know how to get it done, where to go to get it done. It's all at your fingertips. And then you def you have the finances, you have the resources, you can get it done. So that's not the problem. And then if you go to the why you would do it, some of the why is in what I just said when I first started speaking. And then the other why would be, well, if you also have a group of enemies, you're going to do anything to protect yourself and your family because, you know, even a regular person, if you're starving, you go into what? Survival mode. So people would start fighting over food. They would start maybe stealing out of grocery stores. They would start, if, if it came down to, you know, they would start, it's just, in, it, it's basic survival. Well, if you're on that kind of level and you know you have to do certain things in order to defeat an enemy and you're at a certain plateau and a certain level, okay? You have to really bring yourself up and play a chess game that has never been played before. And you have to utilize a level of militant that is above a grade that normal people aren't thinking of because they're not militant, just right. like the military. We're not thinking about what the military or the Navy or any of them people have to do. We're not thinking about stealth bombing or anything. We're not, you know, but guess what? they are so here's the thing on his level he'd be thinking about making a survival in the way he's thinking of making a survival right. which a lot of people want to say conspiracy this conspiracy that but guess what we could say the same thing about military and this and that why because we're not thinking about it or that's not our world doesn't make it not true right. so it, therefore that's that's just how certain people have to do their thing so when you have people that are after you because of whatever reason you know all different types of reason you know they you know riches money fame um maybe they don't like you because of your bloodline maybe your family there's jealousy there's envy even on a lower scale we've seen how envy and jealousy can be even when you're not at that plateau i mean how many people how many of you watching this how many people in general seen how man you know because i have this or because i have that like you know people are just have been envious or jealous or you know and i've never done anything to them like you know i've tried to help somebody and then they've came and they've done you know they wanted to steal from me or hurt me in some kind of way or whatever so imagine being on that level and and you're you know creating music and you're creating this and that and you bring yourself to a level where 
the whole world is loving you and loving what you have to offer and you're protecting people. But not only that, you know that there's certain bad people that are doing other people wrong and they're doing bad things and you have secrets on people. And now then people want to stop you and they want to do something to you to get you out of the business completely because they right. know you have their right. dirty secrets. So right. now that's another problem. So being that said, it leads back to why he would be the, the master of disguise. So right. I say that not to go off topic, but if, if this is not explained, okay, it doesn't lay a foundation of how something like this, like say my information or somebody else's information would even make sense. And a lot of people say, well, why are you explaining this? This has nothing to do with what I asked. Yes, it does. Because if you don't get to the core of this, you right. somebody's not going to understand why this is even happening. Because like these disguises, yeah. this, they're just not. So that's, we could fast forward to the fact that we're dealing with a master of disguise. We're dealing with a master of survival. We're dealing with a master of some somebody who had to do stuff like this since a very young age. So when it comes to somebody else and they have to live like this and it becomes a normal way of life for them, somebody like me, they could be in my life. And it's so easy for them to just maneuver in the way they do under this disguise. And the average person, not only me, but many other people has no clue that they are amongst you. Right. I'm just saying. Right. And when they want you to know, if they ever want you to know, that's when you will. If they don't, you're just not going to know because they're that good. Okay. That was long, but Sorry. we got it. <laughs> So basically, he was a superstar toward the end of his life. He had a lot of resources. People wanted to manipulate and control him and take his resources. So he did use his skill at disguise. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is my belief that he's still among us. He's not, you know, right. deceased. So right. what, what you were also saying then is that um, when you had earlier interactions with him before 2018, you didn't know his identity. Got that right. Okay. So here's a, a really big question. Do you think he knew who you were? Absolutely. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? You ain't got to tell me twice, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think he targeted you? Like, you know, like in a good way. You know what I mean? Why do you think he pursued um, you? Honestly, my thought now... Before I answer this, I'm going to put it out there. I'm not saying that I am 100% correct. Okay, so I'm not trying to start no rumor. I'm just saying what I think and suspect when, when he or if he happens to come back and let he, he would have to verify this or say, okay, good guess, but no, that's not it. Um you know, but what I suspect, and he kind of hinted at, um, but I could be wrong. Um, you know, because I guess maybe I either went missing or whatever the case may be with my original story line. And I was being, you know, and however that was, and I guess he was one of the people kind of like either on the case or I, I don't know how it, I can't really explain it. Like, like kind of looking for me as well with other people. So, you know, so he was amongst others that were like kind of on the hunt finding me. So you're, t you're saying other people knew who you were, even when you didn't. And, oh, yeah. um, they had interactions with you, uh, Correct. case in point, let's say your mother. Okay. Correct. And, um, so he basically knew who you were and somehow got into your life. You had interactions with him 
throughout, you know, your life. And then how, you know, again, in 2018, you started hearing all the music and the coincidences on YouTube and, and all that. How did you really realize who it was? Like, did you ask him directly? I sure did. And the answer? Yes, but don't ask me again, okay? Because <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you yes again. Okay. And you, you said you took him to like a TV station or something? Oh yeah, I did. I took yeah. him to Fox News. And they didn't I believe sure you. Did. They didn't believe no, you. No, and not once did he deny it. Okay. Not once did he say, Oh, she's crazy, don't listen yeah. to her, none yeah. of that. He his his exact words were Let's go, babe. They're not listening to you. <laughs> so, uh, did you like happen to mention this to your kids? Mm, sure did. Oh, that well, they know. Yeah, they were in the house. So they know. They were in the house. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you saw him? Mm, as Jeffrey Lee, because who knows? He's probably floating around in masks. That I, I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know. Uh, well, like on I David's would, you know, neck and see what that is. Is that a mask over there? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> it'd be funny as heck. Although David's a friend of Michael's. And yeah, I know. Sometimes, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to even lie. I wonder if Michael sent him here because I find his his cane very interesting. <laughs> oh. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because let me point that out. That cane is a camel. Is it? Why are you laughing, David? It, it's a camel. Yeah. What's the and I could go into the camel too. It's a go. camel. Let me see your cane, please. Thank sure. you, David. I wonder if, if if Michael happened to send David here because you know, to to you know, whatever. Because see, this cane right here is a camel. Okay, see, I am a very you didn't know this, Dave. I didn't say I saved this for okay. you. I saved okay. it. See, I'm putting you last spot. Bring it on. Oh, don't yeah. worry, Florida. We're gonna have you talk in a minute too, sweetheart. Okay, this cane right here is a camel. Yeah. I saved yeah. this. Dave did not know I was going to do this. Oh, God. This is a camel, okay? And this camel, see, see, Michael's the kind of person that will throw cryptic messages in front of you to um, let you, like it's a wink, wink, nod, nod, like, hello, I'm here, sent by me, I'm around, I'm helping you, why I'm doing... Uh, doing the rest of what I'm doing, I'm whatever, and I find it odd that I got a certain phone call. Why this? Why I started talking about Michael, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, you know, my phone was ringing in the back, and um, and the camel. Do you know that there's a camel named Michael Jackson? And I find it odd, Dave, that you know everywhere we go, he goes. I got a cane, and you know what this is? And somebody has to ask him. They go, well, what is it? He goes, it's a camel. <laughs> right, Dave? Don't you point this out everywhere you go? <laughs> yeah. Everywhere you go, you point this out, I'm Dave. I'm afraid I do. I bet, yeah, yeah, I'm afraid I do. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, and he laughs. He's just laughing, and he's just laughing. So, um, you know, Dave, Dave, Dave. And you do you know, think about it. Do you know who Michael went on CNN as? with Larry King. You know, we got King Smarty, right? Larry King, right? Dave, I didn't tell you I was doing this, did I, Dave? Yeah, you did. I told you I was gonna get you. Yeah, yes. And I am. Okay, so, <laughs> Dave, Dave. Michael went on Larry King, as I'm sitting here, King Smarty's out there, King. The key okay. word is King. So Dave went on, uh, Michael went on Larry King as Dave Dave. Remember that? Yeah. And I'm sitting here with a camel now that Dave walks with this camel, right? <laughs> and I'm going to just show you right here. I'm going to just show you. <laughs> just so this I can show you. It's almost like all. a comedy show, right? That's right. <laughs> Welcome. But I bring welcome here. Welcome yeah, to yeah. Ambush TV. That's right. He said Ambush TV. That's right. No, 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 Dave. Dave, and she's laughing. Little girls laughing. Okay. I'm going to show you right here. I got to pull it up. Hold on. I'm pulling it up right here because, see, I got to go. Bow. You know, I got to give it to him. So, uh, Dave, 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 I'll tell you. So, there's a, uh, 
God. You know, first okay. of all, all right. I'd like just to tell you that Michael get Jackson to it. walked Just get to it. it. <laughs> Michael Jackson. That's right. That's yeah. right. I come prepared, baby. My, see, Michael likes to mess with me. He likes to get me where it counts. Yeah. But see, I got news for you. Let me tell you something. This is the new and improved. This ain't 2018 anymore, Mike. It ain't, ain't 2018 anymore, Michael, baby. Okay. So, Michael, why did Michael Jackson use a cane in his later years? Yes, that's right. The back injury used to cause Michael problems, and he developed arthritis in his spine in L5, and, I meant L4 and five, L5. That's 45 like Trump. Um, <laughs> which is just the same area that I have it. And it can be extremely painful. Okay. Now, what connection does Michael Jackson's moonwalk have to the moon? He's the rocket man, by the way. Remember when Michael used to use the rocket and fly above in his concert? Remember when he also did that? Um, oh, my God. He did that that stupid show. But anyway, like he's the, the moonwalker. Anyway. Okay, anyway. Nothing. It was a cover of James Brown's because Michael was so fascinated. Like he was, he just loved James Brown. He used to get so mad. Look it up, people. When James Brown, they didn't show his feet when he danced. And he went to James Brown's funeral. And all that kind of stuff. But anyway, besides the point. So nothing. It was a cover of James Brown Camel Walk. <laughs> <sighs> I didn't believe my Jackson was the first person to perform the dancing move. I believe break dancers were doing it at the time. Ba 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 Motown 25. Ba 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 ba. You know? So, um, but there is, okay, there is also a camel, how to camel walk like Michael Jackson. And here it is. There is a cute little camel with the name. This is Michael Jackson, one of the few camels I've ever met, but definitely one of the sweetest. <laughs> everywhere he go, everywhere he goes. Do you know what this cane is? It's a camel. Get out of my face. So I'm just saying, he's friends with the king. All right. And the, ki the king of pop and the king. All right. So they could try to pull the wool. All I think, Michael, Michael, they these these people got something going on. All of them. <laughs> All right, they're all friends. All right, but they're not pulling the wool over my eyes in this. All right. So whatever they got going on, just saying. All right, go ahead. So we're like, I don't even know what question I asked. You know, it's <laughs> we were talking but, about Mike. Right. But all right. So and that's Dave. Not Dave, Dave, but Dave. <laughs> a couple years ago, Smarty said something about extraterrestrial. How does that fit in? Well, actually, you know what's funny? You could answer. I just had somebody pass me. I was going to get something. Passed me with a big sticker of an alien. Speak, it was a big sticker. And the alien was like, with the eyes. Boom, yeah. Out of the car over there. I said, now what in the heck is this? They're just aliens. And talk about extraterrestrial. I mean, you got an ET Central over here. Yeah. No, oh, I don't ask. I'll tell you um, what. So, so basically, let's get back to the story. All right. You didn't Actually, know who he was until you did. You tried to bring it out to the public eye. When's the last time you physically saw him that you're aware of? 2018. Okay. Right, little girl? Okay. Right. And then what happened from there? You just have gone on about your life, but decoding everything as you've just tried to do with us. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's not a normal person, you know? There's something going on up there. But go yeah. ahead. So he knew who you were is what, what the real question is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back and talk about your mom. Uh, she knew she knew who you were as well. So she became friends with you when you were younger. 
Mm -hmm. You hung out with her. She was musically inclined. Mm -hmm. Same friends. You do this and that. Mm. And then how did you find out she was your mom? Just came out and said, you know, I'm her mother, this and that, when she was arguing with somebody, but that's normal. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of like, that kind of shocked you a little bit, but then you started mm -hmm. to think about it and then you put all the clues together. Mm hmm Okay. Yes. All right. Now, we, you had talked before about being a targeted individual. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you want to kind of explain what that is in general and then how yes. it affected your life? Okay, yes, we could definitely go into that too. Um, I did see somebody's comment on that and I said we're gonna we could definitely touch on that because yeah. there was a couple people that said uh that's not you know they wanted that to be spoken about. So okay, so for the targeted individuals, um that is definitely something that does need to be spoken about, brought out. Um, it's definitely something that needs to be advocated for. And it is definitely something that needs to be shut down. That is a terrorist organization and it is a kill program that is being run all over the world. But, you know, right here in America on American soil and it needs to be shut down. It's run out of many different areas, but one would be the Fusion GPS centers and other things. There's also hired agencies that are doing it. So, um hired security agencies. So uh, it runs out of all different type of things. So it would involve, um, say, gang stalking. So it'll be a bunch of different, like, they will have, like, conspiracies against an individual, okay? So you will no start noticing that people are literally watching you. They will know your every move. You are being surveilled. They will create street theater, okay, and the, around you, literally. And then they will have a character assassination against you to destroy, destroy your character in every possible way to make everybody dislike you, back away from you, isolate you completely, make sure that you your, your character is completely destroyed. The person that you really are no longer exists and whatever character they decide that they want to paint you, that's the character you're going to be. No matter how who you really, really are, they will plant people and make sure that these people are in every area of your life. So your jobs, your um, your wherever you live, wherever you go, just anywhere in society you are, they will be. Uh, you will start losing everything, everyone, and just you, you're completely alone. That's why people are winding up homeless, jobless. Their finances are gone. Every aspect of their life, nothing is uncovered and untouched. Um, you will start noticing that uh, the directed energy weapons and certain weapons, they could target your DNA. They could target everything, everything on you. And they'll use certain, all different type of weapons. They could use direct energy weapons. There's other uh, weapons they could use. There's free, uh, frequencies, like Smarty talks about the frequencies. So frequencies, they'll hit you with frequencies, all different types of stuff. They could rot the te teeth right out of your mouth with warp speed. They can... Um, target your organs they could target your hair your hair could start to fall out they could they could give you know target your you know you'll get ear aches you'll get headaches you'll get you know fatigue um nausea all dizziness. sorts of bad stuff oh so yeah all, all sicknesses all, all types of bad stuff so these people are literally being murdered the suicide rate is way up because your quality of life is is completely horrible you your finances are completely destroyed my, my, you, you, there's no quality of life and what right. it do ultimately does without going further into that kind of stuff. But I wanted to make sure that everybody that does is going through this or doesn't even understand it, but could know that there's somebody out here that is going through it and completely understands you, um, and knows what you're going through right. and it's real. Okay. And, um, but without going further into detail, the, the goal is to either kill the person or 
get them to kill themselves because it's to make you feel that there is it's completely hopeless, worthless, and there is no way out at the end of the day. Right. It is totally dark and that nobody, there's no, nobody's going to step in. There is no ending to it and you are done. And at the end of the day, it's so overwhelming. And because you don't see a change or any law enforcement or any way that this is going to stop, you're just, you, you know, you reached out and every, you put your tentacles out there like an octopus and reached out for help everywhere possible in every way people think you're crazy you're discredited everywhere because you're a nut job talking about this so therefore you finally say i'm done and you are right. okay and you're not crazy because in reality you have reached out everywhere and the, the attacks keep coming and what human being in their right mind can keep living a life where there is no love. There is no help. There is no happiness. There is no fun. You're fine. You can't do it. You're just right. there in a dark hole. So that that's the end goal. Okay. So bottom line is that it is it is terrorism, domestic terrorism, violence, and abuse at the highest at the highest level that needs to stop. And anybody who claims they are a hero, claims they are in power, and claims they have the resources and everything to stop this and knows about it and is not helping, you are worse than the problem. Mm -hmm. I well, don't you know, give a crap. John Kennedy Jr. was telling me, basically 22 vets a day commit su suicide. And he said that they're actually being targeted, just like you mentioned. You said it in a much longer winded way, but it gives the viewer a feel for what's really happening. You know, you're, because it is. you've been kept in poverty. Your opportunities have been taken away from you. Every time That's something right. comes up, somebody hits you, somebody does this, somebody does that. There's a crisis. So you've never really been able to move forward in your life. You've always been kept kind of like That's in right. conservation mode. That's you know? right. Same with them. Yeah. That's right. Every, every single time there's always something, you know, something you have to worry about, something you can't afford, something you can't do. You're always feeling bad about yourself. You always have a worryation. You always have something you can't pay. You always have something, you know, that you just can't, you can't you just can't do, you know, and there's always something, you know, it's hardcore. Like, you know, you're worried about a li little, just nothing. You're worried about nothing. And every time you try to get ahead, they're going to try to make sure that you can. And they're always, you know, you always have to feel like you are just nothing. You're worthless. They, that's what they want you to feel. And it, even if you know this, even if you know, they, they want you to feel, it doesn't even matter because bottom line is, even if if you try to tell yourself, oh, they want you to feel it. at the end of the day, the reality is like, damn, you know, yeah. I don't have nothing. I am, you know, it's the, it, it, it becomes the reality because it, it, it's the reality. You know, you can't have your own this. You can't have your own that. You can't, you know, pay this. You can't pay that. You can't live your dream. You can't do nothing. And then, then when you try to reach out, Nobody wants to help you like that. Nobody sees any worth in you. And then you look around and it's like, you're always the bottom of the barrel. You're always the worthless one. You're always not good enough. You're always the one that's not worth anything. And you're always the one that has to beg or and not have, or you're always the one that can't afford, or you're always the one that can't pay the bill. You're always the bottom of the barrel, leftover crap that nobody wants. That's who you are. Why though? And then you look and you're like, well, what the hell did I do? What's wrong with me? What the hell is wrong with me? And here's the thing, you know, and you're like, Jesus, you know, and, and here's the thing, you know, it's like, you try and try and try, and it's like no matter how much talent, no matter how much, it's never good enough. They and they'll purposely send people into your whatever your life to like, oh, you're good, you're good, you're this, you're that, purposely to then gaslight you and drop you right back on your anus to do it just to just to make it worse for you, build you up to them, 
boom, let, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, it's the worst abuse that has ever been known. And the reason why I do get a little long winded, the reason why I do do that is because people really need to understand why people are killing themselves. If you just brush over things, sometimes they're like, I don't get it. What's the big, you know, like, okay. Oh yeah. But if you, you know, sometimes you have to go with, because people are not understanding what's really being done to people and why people are offing themselves or going mental. They're not crazy. The program is crazy and the program's calling people crazy. But what's happening is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because the program is making these people crazy because they're, they're psycho. I'm telling you, this is a, this is a sociopath this this is this is sadistic abuse. This is psych this is sadistic abuse. If I've ever seen anything like it. This is this is the work of the devil. If anybody's seen anything like it. These people hate God. And don't, nobody could tell me they don't believe in God because let me tell you something. You have to believe in God to hate God this much to be this damn evil. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm telling you, because I'm I'm telling you, this is this is what they've done. I I mean, I I don't have a if if it ain't smarty doing something for me or somebody helping whatever. I don't have nothing. I got to worry about oh how I'm gonna pay the car, oh how the insurance or how oh sometimes I got to sit in the house with her whatever. I got to tell her, oh we don't have gas money, we don't have this. I go we don't have that. Oh I'm, I can't get that today. I can't get that. Oh we can't get new. Oh uh, you, know, you need this. I can't get it for you. I can't do that. We can't go out here. We can't do this. We can't do that. I oh it's always what we can't do. Always what we right. can't have. Because, and, and, and I got to live out of plastic drawers, you know, and, and nobody has helped yet. Everything has been taken and destroyed. It's right. always, always because right. of this. Right. And not, not, nobody's answered. Nobody. So for those that are watching your Telegram channel, you have posted a lot about this. You work with other mm -hmm. people that have children and under the influence of CPS. Sorry. So we know yes. that CPS is a corrupt organization. All right. That's clear. And what they did to you, we talked <laughs> about last time. So um, how do you see yourself going forward in the future? Mm. Doing what I'm doing. Like, like I like advocacy work, you know? Good answer. Um, I like advocacy work. I like, see, I'm real passionate about that stuff, you know? So I like the advocacy work. I like the music, you know, combining those things. I like the advocacy work. I like the music. Um, I like writing and uh, speaking out about this stuff. So I feel that like, you know, people who don't get help should be getting the help. But um, that would include though, see, that would include though, some of this stuff would have to be, it would have to come out, it would have to be, getting exposed in order to be able to do that though so that's the problem because because Don't these people it need is the help being exposed it is being um yeah yeah, de yeah yes, i mean not fast is. enough but it is coming right. out now right 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 yes it, it's oh shoot okay it's um let me think oh oh sorry there was a phone ringing i'm like Whose is it? Okay. Let me think. Like, let me think. Like, it is, but I think more people need to know. I think there's just so many lies within. Damn, hold on. My leg went numb when I was sitting like that, man. Anyway. <laughs> no, it did. Like, pff, my whole side of my leg. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. So it would have to be like, there's so many lies. Like there are certain, see, I got that, that like, like, I don't like certain lies. Like when you're out there and you're promoting certain things and you got a situation, a certain situation, man, and a whole country sitting here like, oh yeah, go, go, go. Man, I don't know, man. That just don't, it just don't sit right, man. You know, to me, I'm like, man, some of these to blaze that. And I'm, I'm I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'm talking about, you know, 
when you have a man out there and everybody's cheering him on for running for president, I'm just being honest, you yeah. know, and you have a situation such as myself and them, and there's other ones, okay? And we've been going through what we've been going through. There's a petition. Um, answer for it because there's a whole bo lot of people being misled right now. Or if there is now, let's give the benefit of the doubt, right? If there's a situation being held over his head and he couldn't answer right away or whatever the situation may be. So there's some kind of hostage kind of situation, whatever it would be. Blackmail. Right? Yeah. Black yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you come help us in the background, explain what's going on, and then release that later or whatever. But the fact that you're just ignoring it, um, man, that's a problem because you're just letting an innocent woman and her children take the hit so you could just do whatever. So to me, I take that as this. I take it as like, okay, so I'm paying... I'm paying the price and my children are paying the price for whatever it is you've done. So you don't have to pay the price for what you've done. You know what I mean? Before I was born or during when I was a kid, whatever you, whatever you've done. So you're so, you're so, hmm, how do I word it? Okay. You're just... <laughs> You're so much of a punk that you would really leave a woman and children to be this abused and this held down. You lived your whole life and you've had a pretty damn good one, don't you say? Um, and you would let a, a woman and her children, their lives just go to pure waste and be abused not only does it is it going to waste where they haven't had a chance to live their dreams or do a damn thing okay or be you know have a shot at what they're talented at have a shot at anything a fair shot in the world they've got to live like the scum of the earth and they have to be basically sacrificed here okay and go through and be abused and terrorized so you don't have to, you know, give up anything right now at 70, whatever years old you are. Really? You're that much of a punk? Wow. Why you then taunt around waving and, you know, walk around in your suits and wave hi to your fans and keep saying you're winning. How are you winning when you have this situation in the background. So therefore, come on now, you know, not, come on. So that don't, that that's just really bad, man. And there's other people in it, not saying other children, or whatever, but I'm just saying, you know, if you really mean what you say about the child trafficker, because here, here's what I say too, when you said my administration will stop child trafficking, women trafficking and all of that, right? Don't use us to further your campaign because someone like myself and other people, and I'm sure there's people even watching this, would be great like in their area, in their county, in their towns if they want to, in their states, in the whole country. They would step up and join as a team and be awesome in helping in the fight to really do so instead of somebody else that's talking about it and being used so they could become president of the United States and be silenced. So stop that. Don't use us to abuse us, ignore us, violate us and destroy us because as long as you know and I know and the world should know that he knows about me and my situation okay because think about it I have a call with E. Jean Carroll I mean there's much more evidence but just think about this one alone I have a call with E. Jean Carroll who just 
suppose we won that 80 something million from them, right? Now I have a call with her, which I shown the number, her boy, everything. I have text messages and, um, and Twitter correspondence. Well, anybody like that, you would know that the secret service is monitoring her, her phone calls, her Twitters, her everything, because she has that kind of dealing with president Donald John Trump. Do you honestly think they don't have all my information, my correspondence with E. Jean Carroll? Of course they do. I sent it all. They have the anonymous video. They have the petition. They have all of our conversations. Yep. So they have. Yep. So of course they know that I'm, I reported I'm being gang stalked and terrorized. I'm his daughter. I'm his this. I'm that. You know, I'm being harassed. I'm this and that. And of course they're going to watch and see what's going on with me and with all the evidence and stuff I can show. Why? Why is nobody saying anything or doing anything right. or showing up to help or do anything about me or saying, hey, you know, this and that. So that's over a one. It's about two years now or a year and a half now phone call with her and not one word, no help, nothing yeah. from nobody. Yeah. So yeah. regardless, they're guilty of not stepping in to defend a woman and her children and allowing people to follow me around and commit this kind of terrorism bottom line trump it doesn't matter and even if he said i don't want to, he don't want to be my father that's fine i don't care about that what i do care about though is the quality of life for myself and my children Right. I'm sure everybody who's watching would care about the quality of life for themselves and their children as well right. as a family. Right. So right. I don't see anything wrong with asking for the right thing to be done at this point and then also be able, being able to do and return the right thing to be done for everyone else who would need that done for them. And I think that would be exactly where my personality would be perfect. <laughs> that That's is where true. my passion know. is. Besides, yeah. You know, I may laugh and joke and have fun and roll yeah, around yeah. with my craziness, but that's besides the point. I'm very passionate about, you know, hey, people are killing themselves because of stuff like this. Yeah. That people shouldn't be treated like this. This right. shouldn't be happening. Right. And, and the, adva the advantage is that you've gone through it. So, you know, firsthand and you'll be able to help other people down the road. That's right. This, this is wrong. You shouldn't be this age. And because somebody has been abusing you, not because you're just lazy, don't care this and that, blah, blah, blah. No, because you've been abused and you, now you, you know, you had fear, you had this, you had that, the whole nine because you've been attacked and abused and, and all of that, you got to worry about your car and you've got to worry about this. You, you got to live out of plastic. Come on. Yeah. That's ridiculous, man. And then you go and you ask authorities for help and you're ignored. You go and you ask for help and you're rejected and ignored. You're thrown away. You're trash. You're just trash and it's acceptable. But America is the greatest, greatest country on earth, huh? Right. But right. they're so great that they can't protect their own people, huh? Right. Their own military vets, their own women and children. They're most vulnerable. They throw them away. Those people are trash. Why is that? Okay, it's but wrong. I, it's definitely wrong. Yes, and here's the thing. People need to this, start thinking like this. It's not about, stop getting, our, here's what you'll, everybody needs to ask yourself. If anybody's getting upset because of names or this or that, here's the key to ask yourself. First, ask yourself, if it was you and your children, would you be upset? Um... Or would you want somebody to listen to you and help you? Would you be asking for help? And would you care, you know, like if, if the person was doing it to you, would you say, hey, 
this yeah. person's doing it to me? Or would you say, oh my God, wait, I love that person. Oh, you know what? I don't care if you're doing it to me. I, I, it's okay. It's okay because it's you. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, before getting upset, ask yourself this. Does it matter who or does it matter what when it comes to what's right? Take the who out of it. It don't matter. When we're talking about human life, it's about what's right. So it's not about who's right. It's about what's right. And ask yourself about the content of what you're hearing. And ask yourself, hey, this person's being followed around. Hey, this person had their children stolen. Hey, this person is being listened to 24 hours a day. Hey, this person feels violated. Their rights are being this and that. Would I feel this way if I haven't seen my child in six, seven years? Would I feel this way if people were stalking me every day? Would I feel this way? At that point, would I care if this person, this person, and this person was in charge and, you know, it was go, 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 go? How would I feel? Would I care? And, and then they ignored me? Okay, is that right? Not who, but is that right, actually? Hmm. No, it may not be right, no matter who it is. Oh, okay. Maybe it's worth asking, at least asking, why are you ignoring that person? Because it's really not right. But I'm willing to listen to your answer, but we do expect one. What about that? At least do that. You don't have to completely side with one person over another, but just come to the facts and just at least demand an answer. That's it. Okay. Okay. Any other stories or things you want to say? Um, well, let's bring in Dave Dave. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What would you like to say, Florida? Well, well, ho hold on. Uh, well, you can't sit here, but but hold on one second, because we're going to bring po some positive, too. But just say, well, you could say, oh, Florida wants to say something real quick, and then we're going to go to Dave Dave real quick. Okay. But we, okay. All right, Dave, can you move over one second, then we're going to have, Dave, you're next. Look, hey, we may as well, go next. Let's just get it all on one video. <laughs> we'll get everybody there. Dave, Dave's going to go next. I'm moving. And then we're going to go, okay, you you got like uh, five minutes. Is that okay, Flark? Because we got to get Dave in too. Is that okay? And Dave, you're yeah. too because you're coming oh, in. God. Okay, little Astro? Yeah. Come on, Astro. Florida Rose to the scene. Oh, Lord. Hey, oh, my God. Trouble. Trouble. Double trouble. Hey. All right, and we're introducing Florida Rose. Florida Rose. Hey, Florida. Hi, that's What's what up? I kind of felt yesterday yeah. when I felt like I just got thrown away with all that scary stuff that happened to me. When I just felt jobless, I just felt everything. I just felt like I can't, I can't do anything about it. I just can't. I just feel like I don't have a career. I just feel, I just can't. That's why I felt almost like didn't handle my life anymore because what happened. I feel like it is true that mom say talking about because this is what's going on with me with the energy weapon and the suffering with it. And it's a skull in the head thing that bothers me. All I just want to do is just be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if you weren't an astronaut, but you were something else that was fun? Would that be okay? Not something else. Well, there could be other things that would be good for you. I know how to fly a rocket. You do? Okay. All right. What else did you want to say? Um, that's what I want to do as a career. Okay. Okay. As to do, like, I just, like, 
<laughs> people just I just run up my own space agency, my own <laughs> it, it would be better than NASA. Okay. My own everything. I just want everything. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Let me ask a question. Aren't you glad that you're with your mom and she's taking good care of you right now? Yes. Yeah. Everything yeah. oh. stupid weapon things that happen. Everything. Everything that goes on and everything with the thing that happened with me. Because of that stupid program. Other thing that happens. Yeah, CPS. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff. How long, so, how, long, um, how long was she gone for? Uh, what, three or three years? And I just feel like thrown away. Everything I'm abused by those bad people. Yeah. It's a horrible it's thing. Not cool. Horrible. Not cool how my mom is treated. This is not awesome. Okay. Everyone. Okay. I just want the right <laughs> thing to me. All right. Say thank you. Say thanks. Thanks, Florida. Okay, Come she's on. hugging smart. She's gonna get me crying, dude. <laughs> we haven't talked about those particulars, which, um, you know, I think we can kind of surmise what's happened. It wasn't a good thing, right? So she and wants she, to she knows, uh, she knows about the uh, the energy yeah. weapons because, um, she was getting, um, the the ear stuff and the dizziness and then the voice one time she was well not one time a couple times she was like she was like oh i'm hearing something what the heck is that and she was like getting real freaked out and i said well what is it what is it she's like i'm hearing something in my ear and i'm like what do you mean you're hearing something in your ear you know she was getting real freaked out she's like i think the devil's talking to me and i'm like mom you know she did a couple times but but what was weird about it is um um, hold on, let me tell my son. Oh, God, dude. Give me a minute. I'm in interview. I mean, really? What I mean, they, they, it all kicks off at the same time. I thought. I know. I know. Uh, okay. So, and then I told her because, um, because, um, I noticed because I think they hit us at one time because I felt not, I didn't hear the voice, but I felt ding at the same time. And I'm like, that's just so weird. Cause she explained the exact same sound. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just really weird. Yeah. Yeah. And it happened more than one time with that ding at the same. She's like, blah, 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 just like that. But when she heard that, she's like, what's all about? Like, so the, after it happened like five or six times, I, I showed her, voice this goal and I said and that's when I told her there's nothing wrong with you the devil is not talking to you and I told her people are stopping that it's okay there's nothing wrong with you, you don't have to be scared the devil's not because I was like man you know she really thinks like she's the devil's talk, like she's possessed you know I'm like man you know so I'm like man I'm just gonna tell you like so you know something going on and I was like but they're cleaning it up like they're taking towels down they're doing this they're doing that because I'm like man you know she really it's like she's possessed or something. You know, I'm like, man, that's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, man, I got to say something because now, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We haven't oh. talked about some particulars. So for the view. Oh, Dave. All right. Oh, well, okay. But Sorry, just Dave. imagine the worst while the kids were gone and, you know, all of that. Yes. Just imagine the worst. One second, but, though. One second. So, all right. gonna, so now we're in happy mode because we're bringing... Dave, Dave, back. Yay! So we're turning back to a happy house. I'm yeah. I heard this now too. I'm telling you. So everybody on the live, because we had a little downtime, right? We did people, right? Yep. But now we are turning the scene, everybody, and we're going up, 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 up. <laughs> we're getting happy. 
and we're going back now to here's Dave. <laughs> That's what we're doing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Dave, is it really yeah. you, or are you you wearing a mask? Oh well, no. Hey, do you know this is a camel? <laughs> Told you. Uh, well, welcome to the world of man the present here. Have you had an interesting week? Oh God. <laughs> it's um I feel sorry for the viewers. They're sitting there going, What in God's name is going on over there? You know, you got this woman, then you got this child, now you got this rocket guy. What the hell? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it all makes sense, y'all. Just bear with me here and I'll try to I'll try to pull it all together for you. Guess what? And connect the dots. Um, uh, about 30, 39 years, God, 39 years ago, I met a man named Michael Parver and type his name in the internet and look at what he did. Michael Parver was a, a studio rep. He represented, um, Paramount, Universal, MGM, uh, TriStar, New Line, all of them. And, um. You ever wonder when you ever notice a newspaper back in the 80s, you see a, a, a film would hit the town and it'd cover the whole newspaper. And yeah. then next week it was smaller, next week it was smaller, next week smaller. Well, the person that was in charge of all that in Atlanta was Michael Parver. Very rich guy, Jewish guy, very rich. And he met up with me, and I forgot how we met. It was from some other businessmen in Atlanta. But we got together, and we decided we'd build ourselves a space camp. And space camps is a lot of money. Now, the space camp that exists right now in Huntsville, Alabama, I built it. And they'll deny that. I wrote the 1,500-page curriculum. I built the equipment at Gardley Aerospace in Apopka, Florida. They from Alabama would come down and inspect the equipment, see how it's coming. And we had the 3D axis chair. We had the one third gravity chair. We had the stations. We had the spacecraft. And I built all that stuff. And uh, I'd go out and stand by the dumpster till they were through visiting and I'd come back in. I was project manager. Why was that so? Because we were competitors and they didn't want to share anything. Little did they know their competitor was building their equipment. So that's what I did. I was busy doing that 39 years ago and I was working with Michael Parver. Well, one day Michael Parver was hosting um, the premiere of The Right Stuff the Mercury astronauts and I got to meet all the Mercury astronauts and an old friend of mine, uh, Chuck Yeager guy, Brooke Soundberry. We're both from West Virginia. We are both in the West Virginia hall of fame. And he was born just a few miles from my house. And so was Homer Hickman. Homer Hickman, October sky was only born three miles in Coldwood from where I lived in Welch. That's all in the film. And if you remember the mine superintendent that was in Homer Hickman's film, that was my mother's father. That's my grandfather. He was the mine superintendent. And Chuck was looking at me and said, what do you think was going on back there? I said, there was something in the water. Because <laughs> we, all, we all were kind of different. But um, anyhow, the point to all this is I have tie-ins. I tie directly into all this. So Michael Parver said to me one day, he was hosting a, another premiere, and he said, um, I'm also doing the Michael Jackson tour that's coming to Atlanta. You want to meet him? I said, sure. You know, didn't, never met him before. So he gives me backstage passes. Sure enough, I walk right into him. There he is. And uh, he's talking to me, and he said, you're not excited. I didn't strike him as a fan or a hip hopper, and I wasn't. He said, what do you do? I said, well, I'll build rockets. You got a few minutes? And he said, yeah. So he said, and we listened. We became good friends. And um, then I got stamp of approval by uh, Janet. 
and she came in and she said, wow, you're kind of different. I said, yeah, it's just one of these weird things. And um, so we all got along pretty well, met Latoya, met all the, all the other kids. And then I met a miserable person named Joe Brown or Joe uh, Jackson. Jackson. And he was just awful. God. He worked them kids to death and he he just ran everybody into the ground and just out for the money. And um didn't care what happened to he robbed Michael Jackson of his childhood and you could tell it. Yeah. And uh and in my world you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that one. <laughs> and uh he uh it was rough, it was really bad. And um that's when Janet knows something about him. She goes Boy, you and Michael get along, but I've noticed you don't want anything. No, I don't want anything. You don't even want, I don't even want people to know who I am, you know, they don't even need to know my name. Uh, you know, oh, you know Michael? No, they don't need to know that. And Michael Jackson liked that about me, so we hung out a lot together. And uh, so I kind of got to know him pretty well, and uh, nobody that knows that about me. I did that once before with somebody who's famous. Uh, Viola Armstrong. She had a son named Neil. So my surrogate mother was Viola Armstrong, and we didn't let. They're writing a book about her, and her family said, "We don't know anything about you, but we found this box with all these letters tied up in ribbons between you and Viola." Yeah, how about that? You know something? It's cool. I said, well, who are you? I said, I was just a good friend, and we didn't want anybody else to know about this. It was our we could escape to each other. And that's exactly, I guess, what Michael started doing. But, um, because I wasn't from his world. I had nothing to do with it. Didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, all I saw was a cool dude that was kind of nice. And, um, but I knew he had a lot of baggage. But I didn't know how much until I met up with this crowd. <laughs> well, it's hey. interesting because... Well, I've recently talked to, you know, Lydia, you, and then uh, John Kennedy Jr., and you all have met Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, have you ever met Trump yourself? Uh, only in official capacities when I was working. And that's when I was working at the Navy, uh, oh. O&I, Office of Naval Intelligence. And um, it's just... Um, I what I'm amazed is the damage that's been done it has been extensive. You've seen it personally in these interviews. Um, people don't go through stuff like this and you know make it up. Oh, it's fine, la la la. You know, and you yeah. have an interview. No, the damage is severe. It's it leaves scars. Yeah. It's there forever, and you got to try to. And then you have to make the decision. Um, the A, get involved, or B, just stay out of it. And if you do get involved, what can you do? Well, in my case, I could do a lot. So I came on board, and um, uh, Lydia needs friends, friends who don't want anything. Friends that's got power to just help because you can. Not looking, don't have an agenda, don't want anything. Right. Oh, God, I'm, my whole life has been like that. In my own personal world. Yeah. So, you know, my question to them is, y'all trust me? That's something that you got to answer. It's a question of a lifetime. Well, do you? I don't know I'm not yet, Dave. Bring you down now, but you know, it sounds like you got We got to see, Dave. There's somebody up there hiding from me. So okay. Okay. He doesn't want to get on this interview yet. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I have a... In, in the description of this video, there will be a link for video uh, Lydia's Cash App, PayPal, and all that if you want to donate to help support her. But, yeah, I think that once the future hits, we get the chambers, we get our new bodies. Uh, it's gonna You're going to be up, hitting the ground running, uh, Lydia, to help people. You will be able to help many that are in your situation right now. I mean, you have the you already have a great network of people. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. that's not quite the same as friends that have your back. You know what I mean? Right. But you already have people that need help. Right. 
No. Well, I mean, that's what, you know, that, and that's what it's about. Cause there's, there's a lot of ideas I have, you know, um, and once that sort of exposure happens and certain things happen, then I could bring those ideas forward and <laughs> the ones that need to. What is he doing? He is doing something. Hey, Cisco. You know, maybe Cisco's mic on a mask. I don't know, because he just won't show his daggone face. Okay, so his Cisco is the bodyguard guy, right? He's the bodyguard guy. Is he like right that there? won't come downstairs so I could ask him to say something. He just showed himself right up there. Well, he kabooed, smiled. And then took his bottom right back over there. And all I wanted to do, he could even yell it. He doesn't even have to get on the camera. He could yell it he could stand from there. The computer. Yeah. So yeah. So, so basically what happened is one of, and, and Smarty and I were talking, and he said that this Cisco bodyguard guy <laughs> um, basically um, confirmed what you were saying about Whitney. And, you know, yes. And, that's so, what I wanted him to do. Yeah. I wanted him to just stand yeah. there. He could stand right in the back. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Listen, he's a great guy. He's a very nice guy. You know, Cisco is an awesome person. He's an awesome guy, you know? Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted him to stand in back of the damn it's computer, or whatever he does, and just confirm it. But he takes his quiet self right back and he goes, scoots back over there <laughs> and hides again. It's all you good. Know? So he's confirmed mm. much of what you said. And of course, yeah, he when I was talking about Michael and then I was talking about Whitney uh, be, just being like, they were, you know, just um, things that they would do. Like when I was around them, like just a certain thing. I was talking about like when they hang out, you know, as normal people. And he was just laughing and smiling. And I just turned to him. I said, what are you laughing at? And he was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what they do. Like, you can't even make this up. And I said, see, I told you guys. Yeah. Well, like yeah. David just said is you've been through a lot of trauma in your life and you can't make these stories up. Now there, there will be people that accuse you of, you know, trying to do whatever this or that. It doesn't matter. You can't even make these stories up. There's so much. Who the heck would want to. <laughs> yeah. And who'd want to live that life? Um, hey, David, have you ever um, come across Charles Manson? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being serious. No, I have. No, seriously, I have not. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. He's such a social maniac. Um, yeah. You know, paranoid, <laughs> schizophrenic. He's got it all going. Um, yeah. Well, I was just, I was just curious. Dangerous. I've talked to you, Lydia, and then uh, John Kennedy Jr. And and like there were three people that there's a little overlap, you know. And it's like interesting how that's coming out all of a sudden. Yeah. So, uh, be Dave. What? Charles Manson. He used to put stuff in the in the refrigerator. Little surprises, Dave. Like what? Dead rat? <laughs> what? Ah, well, not well. Well, since you asked, no stool. Oh, how nice. <laughs> anyway, let me explain something about the cane. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll find this interesting. He's back. Okay. I uh look for the message in it. There's a message in it. You can okay. call the probate the probate judge in Maryville, Tennessee, and ask him who was the executor of Colonel Arthur Bailey Williams estate, who was the exo officer of General LeMay. And you will the judge will tell you David Tyson Adair. So how do you Photoshop that, y'all? So anyway, I take care of the estate, and in that estate, I find this cane. And this cane is made back 134 years ago. 1896 it was made. Wow. And um, it had some ears on it, but I ground them down because the ears were hurting my palm. But up until December, I didn't need a cane. I caught COVID, and it just ripped my heart, lungs, and legs apart. And so now I have a limp, thanks to COVID, and I use this cane. But this cane, um, you know, it's just just happened to be in the estate. It was in a, a, a stand of umbrellas, and I thought, what is that head? It looks like a horse. Get close to it, and it's a camel. So 
Umbrellas, huh? Uh, yeah, that's where I pulled it out. Just happened to be in a stand of umbrellas. Uh, he walked with an umbrella all the time, too. No, I don't. <laughs> so anyway. What part of Tennessee, Dave? Maryville, Tennessee. Maryville? Tennessee. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I look it up just in case. Look I'm up the probate story. judge. So any other, um, any other topics we want to talk about today? Um, no, other than, um, I'm just down here joining this crowd. We got some things with mutual projects we want to work on. And I met Lydia in the middle of all this. <laughs> uh, and that's just where we're at. Um, yeah, she's right. I didn't know she had a thing about McCain. But, um. Anyway. The element of surprise. I I've was laughing the best. We saw yeah. a video of you guys out to dinner. I think it was like last whatever uh, Friday ish, and um, it was loud. And I can just imagine how much chaos there was. Yeah, Judge Mike. Okay. You tell me to look up the judge, and it's Judge Mike. You're out there, man. What's his last name? Mears. Okay, well, that's not Jackson, is it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, okay. Well, whole, you can run into coincidences, and there are such Now do you see what I'm saying? Now you see it, right? There's something to see. These people are whacked, man. <laughs> I told you, man. It's not me. See what I told you? That's the kind of crap that they do to me, man. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you now. All right. <laughs> Well, I told it's... you, man. They're all in on it. They're all in on it, these people. They're all yeah. in on it. Pay no attention to me. I'm just whacked. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we're good for today. And um, so for the viewer, if you have a question, send them over to me. And hopefully Lydia and I will talk again in a couple of weeks. And hopefully that clarified some of the questions from the last time. And then we had the added bonus of David, a little blip of King Smarty in the background. Um, little, little Sophia, like we had them all in this video. So. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time so much. Thank you. And P.S. Uh, P.S. The king, king of rock, king of pop. Tennessee, Elvis. Just <laughs> okay. Put it all together. Okay. Adios, people. You have a great day. You heard? I gotta get the Tennessee. I gotta get the Tennessee accent on. I gotta get the country out. Wait, these dogs? He'll be coming around the mountain. Thank Good you. Day, See you later.